So this is the uh, high performance uh, caliper. If you've got um, the uh, other type, you might like to have a look at my video uh, on the rear, uh, changing the rear discs and pads, uh, because the ATE caliper used on the uh, back is more like the one that's on the front on the low performance uh, versions. Um, this is a good time to uh, use a wire brush and a drill just to clean up your uh, caliper and uh, make it look nice. While it's all on the car it's much easier. Uh, so I'll just uh, give this a clean and then we'll start to disassemble. So the first thing to do is to remove the uh, spring clip uh, and that's done from the middle with a screwdriver like so. Do be careful though because it doesn't half, it pings off quite violently. Like that. Okay, so once you've done that, around the back of the caliper you'll see two little uh, uh, plastic plug. Plastic plugs like this. Take the lid off and then in there you'll see a 9mm uh, hex which is a slide pin. There's one uh, further down uh, also which you can see there. Uh, leave these uh, torques, uh, leave these Torx bolts alone. So. In here, there you see the uh, plastic cap, take that off, 9mm inside. Have a look. Have a look in your um, toolbox, you'll probably find that you don't have a 9mm hex. Uh, it's a bit of an odd size, you might have to order one. If you've got the standard uh, brake system, uh, that may not be 9mm, it might be 7mm like the rear. Uh, but do check before you start that you've got all the uh, appropriate tools. So with your uh, 9mm hex, just uh, remove the uh, slide pins, uh, top and bottom. Uh, fairly simply they'll just run out with a ratchet. This is what the uh, slide pins look like when they're out. Uh, short thread. I like to take them out completely to clean them up uh, and that's the uh, hex in there, as I say, um, rather awkwardly 9mm. When these are tightened back up it's uh, 58 newton meters of torque when you're putting them back in. This is the front near side in, uh, in England so um, you've got the sensor wire um, and this is uh, hooked under the uh, bleed nipple here. So you just um, pop the uh, bleed nipple cover off. Um, if you look at it, uh, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little black plastic uh, rubber area there. This keeps the uh, cable away from the uh, bleed nipple itself so that the uh, when the thing is together you see the cable will go through that hole uh, so make sure it goes back in the right place. Pop the cover back on to stop debris getting in. And then literally f follow the wire along. It will just come out of the covers quite. These little clips relatively easily. And then this goes up to the uh, junction box here. Just pop that apart and, uh, and uh, you're done. Bear in mind if your uh, low brake level, uh, your low brake pad uh, warning light has come on, you need a new one of these, you can get them quite cheaply off eBay, they're about 10 quid, something like that. So that's the two uh, slide pins removed, and once you've done that, you'll notice this whole assembly will be loose, and it simply needs a little bit of pulling, uh, and you should be able to uh, remove that from the uh, outboard pad uh, and take it off the uh, disc itself. So we'll just do that. I'll just use a screwdriver to uh, help me. 
So when you've lifted the uh, caliper off, uh, bear in mind this is a big hunk of cast iron, it's extremely heavy. Um, you don't want to leave it dangling on the uh, brake cable back there. Um, you want to tie this up out of the way. Bear in mind that the uh, inboard pad will be held captive, well, <laughs> more or less held captive uh, by its uh, anti-rattle clips within the uh, hollowed out piston there. You need to thread through the uh, wear sensor. That there is the uh, one big piston that you're going to have to rewind um, to uh, enable you to put your new pads in. Uh, I'm actually changing this for judder rather than uh, worn pads. Um, you can see here there's loads of life left on these and the wear sensor uh, is absolutely fine. So I'm going to reuse the uh, wear sensor. Uh, I'm going to throw away the pads. You can see there's some cracking on the face there. Uh, absolutely useless. These have only got a few thousand miles on them. Uh, and the outboard pad here, you can see, simply engages into the uh, pad carrier. Uh, again, plenty of uh, life left on it, but uh, not particularly good quality. Um, to uh, refit up clearly, put the outboard pad in there. The inboard pad engages in here with your rewound piston, and then the whole thing simply slots back over and you put your uh, slide pins back in. But we're not doing that just yet. We're going to remove this carrier so that we can get the uh, disc from the uh, hub. So with the uh, caliper cleaned up and tied out of the way, um, bear in mind you might have to um, just uh, free up this uh, ABS wire uh, as well from the uh, brake line here when you're uh, handling the caliper as the uh, ABS cable goes to the hub and the uh, brake line obviously goes to the caliper uh, so you have to separate them out of these clips as well in the same way that you separated out the uh, wear sensor. Now with uh, that out of the way you can see there's the uh, uh, carrier here which is bolted with two bolts 15 millimeters uh, top uh, and there's one just down here as well. So this is what you get when you take the bolts out. Um, bracket needs a little bit of further cleanup. And the two bolts. Now these are red for a purpose. Jaguar recommend uh, that these are replaced uh, every time you remove them. Um, as I say this garage clearly hasn't renewed them because these are not new bolts and the uh, thread lock is the original Jaguar, so hadn't even put new thread lock on them. Couldn't be bothered. Typical garage. This is an RAC uh, approved garage, incidentally. So uh, pretty crap there, I think. When you put these back on, they torque up to 115 Newton meters. Um, just to inspect the bolt, make sure it's in good condition. If you're a bit doubtful, get some new ones from your uh, local dealer. Make sure you put thread lock on them uh, and run them back in 115 Newton meters. Make sure they don't um, uh, work themselves free because these are the only thing that's keeping the brake caliper itself on the disc. Once you uh, remove the uh, caliper support, uh, you'll find that the disc, if you've removed the uh, spring clips, which my previous garage didn't bother fitting, uh, then this whole disc should become free uh, and it just uh, lifts away. Be careful, it's quite heavy. Um, uh, specifications for this are 32mm when new, 30mm is the minimum uh, thickness, so uh, get your micrometer and uh, check the uh, thickness in a few different places if you're replacing your discs for uh, wear purposes rather than brake judder. So uh, this is what you're left with. This is the uh, hub face. Now uh, this area here is slightly recessed but this bit and this bit need cleaning fairly meticulously so that your uh, disc when you apply it doesn't uh, have too much run out. Uh, incidentally, the um, lateral run out permitted uh, on the brake disc is nine one hundredths of a millimetre. 
So uh, here I've got the uh, replacement disc. Um, most discs come with a uh, coating, so you'll need to clean that off with some brake cleaner um, to make sure you don't contaminate your pads. Um, these are reasonable manufacture. Uh, Bosch should be reasonable quality. Uh, we'll put those on. Um, put on the uh, new pads um, and uh, reassemble. So uh, this is the hub face, all nice and clean. Um, no bits of rust or debris there, so all ready to accept the uh, new disc. Uh, do remember that uh, when you're doing any uh, work on the brakes, where well, you're going to have to rewind the uh, um, piston and the caliper, make sure there's enough just to undo your uh, brake fluid, make sure there's enough room in there. Um, so that when you uh, displace the fluid from the caliper back up into the reservoir it doesn't run all over the place because it can damage your paint. Um, so again, best to have the uh, bonnet open and uh, keep an eye on that as you're running the piston back. So this is a typical brake uh, rewind uh, set which works very nicely. Uh, they're not very expensive, you can get them online from all sorts of uh, suppliers and well worthwhile. Uh, unfortunately, uh, normally you'd take this, uh, thread the uh, plate through like so, and then choose the appropriate end to press against your piston and as you twist the uh, end it separates the two and thereby rewinding the piston. However, on these uh, performance canapers, you can see the uh, hollow piston there. Um, this hole here is uh, not big enough to uh, get my rewind set through. So I'm sure Jaguar have a uh, special tool for the job. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to do it the old fashioned way with a G-clamp. So what I would do is use something like this to place in the hollow of the piston like so and then you can use a, a G-clamp to uh, pinch the two together um, that way you avoid pinching on one side of the uh, piston uh, and stopping the uh, piston from rocking in its bore and damaging the seals so I would you know, you could put a, a sheet of metal there or something, a little bit of wood, whatever, just so that you get uh, even, even pressure on your uh, piston. So if you get yourself a big G-clamp, just like this, uh, you can uh, tighten that up and it'll push the piston back very uh, easily. So uh, get yourself a decent brand of uh, new pads. Uh, I'm fed up of the uh, judder I've been getting through the steering wheel um, with the use of cheap ones, so I've opted to get genuine Jaguar ones. Uh, I've had no problem, however, with padged uh, pads on the uh, rear of the car, and they're acting on Ferodo discs, and they've been fine, so I recommend either of those as well. So here we are, uh, pads in place, uh, caliper uh, all back together, just needs the slide pin to put it back in. Uh, I took the opportunity to uh, give a little uh, coat of paint um, uh, over that as well, just to freshen it up a little bit. Uh, you can see the new disc on there. Uh, don't forget to apply your uh, brake pedal a few times to uh, seat the uh, brake pads against the uh, disc. Uh, before you go anywhere, then of course uh, check the level in your fluid reservoir uh, top up if necessary and uh, same with the other side. Of course there isn't the uh, wear indicator on the other side so it'll be a little bit um, simpler. And uh, there we are all complete. Slide pins in, 58 newton meters torque on those. The uh, anti-rattle clip back uh, and the uh, disc installed. Just going to take these uh, retaining nuts off and then fit the wheel and we are all finished. Same with the uh, other side of course. Um, 
It's currently dark as you may have noticed, so it'll be right for starting at 7pm just before it's about to start going dark. But, uh, that's essentially how to do the front. And I've deliberately done the uh, uh, performance braking system, as I say, it's sig significantly different to the um, standard one, which is more like the uh, rear brake, um, which you can uh, see on one of my other videos. So, uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching.